everyone, this is Kelly Mara here. Today we're doing something a little closer to my roots, although that isn't saying much considering I haven't really been on YouTube for very long or doing very much, but today we are going to do a little art review of Lily Jean. Now, as you can see here, I have her DeviantArt page pulled up and just in case some of you watching this aren't aware of who Lily Jean is, though that's probably unlikely considering the amount of people who have spoken about her. She's basically a quote-unquote social media influencer who has garnered over 1 million followers over on Instagram and she's also quite the prolific um, makeup artist, shall I say? She also dabbles in quite a wide variety of creative arts such as cosplay and most importantly, digital art, which is what we're going to be looking at today, considering that's basically what my whole channel is about. <laughs> I know I have quite a bit of fun making commentary videos on people and drama, but Art is really why I'm on this platform in the first place and I do try to stick as close to that concept as possible. Obviously, I'm still growing and adapting, but hopefully I never lose sight of that. <laughs> and if I do, please feel free to call me out. But anyway, back to Lily Jean. Uh, this basically seems squeaky clean, nothing too out of the ordinary, except for the fact that well, let's just say I've never been the best person at social media. I don't know how people can get followers or really get exposed in a good way, not in a bad way, to millions of people on the internet. And had I just seen Lily Jean, well, her page at the very least, and just looked at it from a first glance, I think, whoa, look at this girl. She's she must be really lucky like she must have hit some sort of gold mine to strike such a big following but if you look at some of the videos out there that have been made about her you start to realize very quickly why her following isn't quite proportional shall we say to the level of skill displayed in her craft and that isn't to be slanderous or anything. I genuinely think that Lily still has a very long way to go in terms of her art specifically. And before you all raise your pitchforks and scream at me saying, oh, art is subjective, as someone who pretty much started off with that same sort of skill level, I can tell you right now that Lily Jean is not a bad artist. In fact, it's very clear that she has really good potential to be a good artist. It's just that she is simply a beginner and she makes a lot of beginner mistakes. And this video is just to sort of provide tips to others who may struggle with the same issues as Lily does in their art, how to correct those issues and how to improve your skill overall. So with all that being said, let's jump right into the video. So going back to her DeviantArt page here, we're just gonna have a look at her gallery to see pretty much what we're working with. And as you can probably see, she has a lot, and I mean a lot of cosplay stuff. And because I don't know anything about cosplay or what goes into it, what makes something a good cosplay or a bad cosplay, I'm not gonna comment on it. I will say that I do genuinely think that Lily Jean is a very pretty girl and she clearly bases a lot of her artworks on these sort of cosplays that she does. I do sense first and foremost Lily is a cosplayer slash makeup artist first and an artist second so I don't really blame her art for looking a bit amateurish shall I say because she clearly hasn't been dabbling in it as long as she has clearly been doing makeup and cosplay stuff or I don't know I could just be assuming 
Um, you definitely see a lot of improvement in her work though, which you will see later on in this video. But going through her gallery, I decided to put down some ground rules for what I wanted to do. Basically, the first rule I decided on was that I will not be recreating traced artwork, which you do see a couple of in her gallery because it just doesn't show her true skill or style. I will only be recreating original art. And finally, I will be picking works that I find personally visually compelling, which shows a wider range and variety to Lily's art style. These are the three pieces I ended up choosing. We have one full body shot, a bust shot, and also a head shot, which gives us a pretty good variety of character poses to try and best represented Lily Jean's improvement over the years. So to start things off, we are taking a look at Lily's oldest piece, which is her Christmas fairy one. I'm just doing a bit of an oversketch on top of the actual drawing to take a look at the proportions and the pose of the character. From an overall visual perspective, right away you can tell that the head and shoulders are a lot wider, a lot bigger than the lower body. It looks like she's sort of funneled down like an upside down triangle. And just from a visual standpoint as well, the drawing has a lot of green. I even had trouble sort of distinguishing between the wings and the tree. And also just her toes down there, which I drew a question mark next to just because I wasn't really sure what she was trying to do. And you'll see in a minute why this pose looks awkward and the reason is because as you can see there, there isn't a clear line of motion as to where she's going, what she's doing, and on top of that, she doesn't even have hands. Lily does this a lot even in her recent speed paint of Wonder Woman which I showed before where she just doesn't draw hands and she hides them elsewhere. <laughs> like she did it with the hair in this piece. And it is a very common tactic that a lot of beginner artists use. Um, usually the most common perpetrator is just hands behind the back. That, that's basically the same thing. And it's completely natural to do that when you're first starting out. And now we see my attempt at sort of trying to make this drawing through my own interpretation. I can see sort of what Lily was going for initially where she tried to have the fairy sort of reaching up. I assume she was maybe trying to put the star or a star on top of the tree, but it didn't really communicate as well because she didn't fully commit to the line of motion. So I opted for a stronger, more dynamic pose by making a clear upward motion. You can see here that she's clearly fully extended um, hands to toe, drawing her wings in a bit more distinctive, sort of, uh, I guess, realistic shape that you wouldn't be too surprised if you saw on an insect. Another thing I noticed that sort of contributed to the pose looking a bit more static is because the character is facing full on towards the camera especially her face. So in my version, I decided to tilt her face away from the camera to face whatever it is she's looking at or reaching for, which I thought would make a much more compelling composition overall. Um, Lily also didn't really put any expression on her character per se. It was just like a smiling face. So it's not really clear what she's feeling, what's happening. It seems just like she's trying to pose for a picture, which is fine. But if you want to elevate your drawing and make it more compelling to the viewer, it's good to be able to try and tell a story in that single illustration. And in this case for me, I'm having my fairy basically trying to reach something. Maybe she's trying to catch something that's falling or she's trying to get somewhere. Basically turning it into more of an action shot and less of a picture pose, I suppose. And I always find that dynamic poses like these action shots, it 
does seem really intimidating but it's actually a lot more liberating just because you don't have to focus so much on proportions as you do the overall motion. If you guys have seen my previous videos on character design which aren't as well produced as this one, not that this one is much of an improvement, I just have a better mic which I still forget to use sometimes. I talk a lot about line of motion, which is basically the flow of how your character is standing, how your character is presenting, and it just helps so much in creating compelling fluid poses. Just because I feel like a lot of beginner artists tend to fall into the trap of um, looking at the individual body parts so focusing on making the head the neck and shoulders and then making the abdomen the arms and legs and not really looking at them as a whole picture and i definitely fall into this trap myself as well sometimes it's something that i'm still trying to teach myself not to do but obviously it's a lot better if you can avoid making that mistake from the beginning. Another thing I didn't mention that is one of the reasons why I love action poses so much is the hair. If your character has long hair um, and it's not necessarily a realistic setting where they can just have it flying around in the wind, it's so much fun to be able to play with that hair, letting it sort of curl and sway and sort of fringe wherever it wants and it just hair helps so much in sort of reinforcing that line of motion you set as you can see here with my fairy the direction in which the hair is flowing indicates which way she's actually going and it also implies the speed Obviously, if she was going like super duper fast, her hair would be a lot more pushed back. But because she's a fairy, I figured, well, they can't really move all that fast with those dainty wings. So I, it could still realistically look a bit wavy because I am still trying to pay homage to Lily's original drawing where you can see the character had quite curly hair. And... That is also a reason why the pose in her drawing looks so static, is because her hair is also very static. If your character is wearing loose, wavy clothes, it's also a very good opportunity to use them as a tool to indicate that line of motion even further. So not only do we have the hair, we also have this fairy's dress here, which is flowing a little bit in the wind, pushed back in the same direction as the hair, but not completely flattened out, which implies once again the speed. It's just good to keep in mind all the components that are coming into your character and playing around with them to bring your drawing to its fullest potential. Also, the further along I am into the drawing, the more it started getting into my head that this is someone's soon-to-be-dead mom for some reason. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably the hair, the expression, and the overall pose. It looks like she's trying to um, rescue her child from death or something of that matter. She's trying to sacrifice herself for the greater good and then her story is going to be passed down to her newborn child and it's just, it's a whole arc here guys. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for some backstory for this character even though she's not even my character but I think uh, it could be fun. <laughs> anyway, I didn't actually have any qualms with the color choices that Lily made for her character. I think she's, well considering she is a makeup artist, she's really good at mixing and matching colors. And she's never been particularly bad at sort of creating these complementary colors that she is just lacking in practice, I suppose. But I actually really like how the brown of her hair and the green of her dress go together and also just how it complements the blue of her eyes. But 
that is in no small part thanks to the saturation of the colors themselves. If you took a look at Lily's original drawing, all the colors were extremely saturated. So if you look at my little triangle color wheel here, it would be all the way to the farthest right corner, which is, it's how you get those eye bleeding colors that I just, it really shows if someone is a newbie. So a good idea is to actually dull the colors a little bit so that they look softer and therefore can blend together a bit better. I also took out the Christmas tree just because I thought it looked really busy with everything put together on top of the sort of um, glittery background. So I opted to make the composition a lot simpler so that you could focus more on the subject which is the fairy. And if you notice for the wings as well, I decided to make it a different shade of green to the dress just because one of the problems I did point out in Lily's drawing was that she used the same shade of green for basically everything. It was the same color for her wings, the same color for the tree and even her dress and everything just looked like a giant green blob and it was just in desperate need of variety. So instead of the more sort of foresty green I chose for the dress, I decided to go for a more brightly saturated lime green for the wings just to make it pop a little more, make it look a bit more magical, not necessarily realistic, but hey, she's a fairy. On top of that, I also played with the opacity a little bit. So opacity is basically how dense the colors are and how much you can see through that particular color and in Lily's drawing the wings were completely full opacity which meant that if you held it up in front of your eyes you would not be able to see anything past them so it would be like um, a blindfold essentially and I opted for my fairy to make them look more translucent like actual insect wings or something similar to Tinkerbell just making them look a lot more delicate and dainty. Now, when it comes to shading, my biggest tip is to never use black. Black just completely muddles all the other colors, it drowns out the saturation, and it just makes it look like they've been rolling around in ash instead of having shadows on them. A really good video I watched that really helped me with my shading was Raw Straws on... I can't remember what it was, but I think it was 10 beginner mistakes that all artists do. And he was talking about how if you use a more saturated version of the color instead of a darker version of the color which was something I was doing you actually make the character and the colors more vibrant and it seriously worked so well and I highly recommend you guys try it too it completely changed how my drawings look and I'm so glad that I did watch that video I have it linked in my description if you guys are interested in watching it too you can actually see Lily attempt to shade her character as well, although she doesn't do it completely. And what I mean by that is that she only shades where the creases of her dress are and the layers on the tree. But other than that, she didn't really shade the character's skin at all, which makes it look as flat as it is. There was a little attempt at it, but I don't think it was significant enough to add that dimension that shading is supposed to give. She did manage to succeed in shading texture into the fairy's hair, however, which is pretty good, uh, but it definitely could use improvement. It's just all about practice and learning from other people and just not giving up. I feel like I still have a lot to learn in that department as well, but my biggest concern is actually trying to make nicer lines. I think that's my biggest insecurity right now is how my lines look. I don't particularly like how they look. I've experimented with a bunch of pens and pressure settings and it all just looks the same in that it just looks so flat. And I've seen people do some amazing line artwork and I just, oh, I wish that was me. But I'll get there, I'll get there. I'm pretty happy with how the fairy turned out actually. 
it's not that bad once I had it all colored in and shaded in and in part it was thanks to Ross Jaw's video on actually how to shade because I feel like sometimes when I don't draw for a very long time I just forget everything and hopefully this video is a reminder to myself not to forget it and after some finishing touches this is how the drawing looks I'm actually really really proud of how this came out. The pose looks super dynamic. I decided last minute to add some tears to make it look like she's very distressed. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Next up, we have a piece that is made a year later and right away you see some significant improvement when it comes to the character's expression and also the dynamic pose. Even if it is just a headshot, the way Lily drew her hair implies a much stronger line of motion which gives the illusion that the character is actually in the middle of turning her head around instead of just standing there and smiling for the camera. She's also gotten a lot better at making facial expressions as you can see here. You can clearly see that this character is not to be trifled with. And yes, the character is heavily inspired by Mulan but I don't think she specifically was trying to draw Mulan. Either way, it looks good from a general viewpoint, much better than her Christmas fairy one. However, once we draw in the overlay sketch, we sort of start to see some issues with the drawing. As you can see, the eye is clearly not aligned. I know that she was probably trying to go at it from an angle, but it just doesn't quite look right. One is clearly much higher than the other and the ear is just positioned far too high from where the nose is. On top of that, the face does look a little too skewed towards the ear because the eye is basically poking into where the ear is and the nose is just a little bit off center. So let's see what we can do to improve the piece even more. The important thing when you're drawing a headshot is because so much emphasis is placed on the face, you have to be very very careful to make sure that the face is completely, well I wouldn't say symmetrical because it depends on the angle the character is at, but at the very least, the face looks right for the angle that it's in. And because the character we have here is turned slightly towards the right, their right, our left, we want to make sure that the face is also skewed more towards the right in a way that doesn't make it look like their face is lopsided. Obviously guidelines on the face is a really helpful way of doing this, but I do understand that just having those guidelines there doesn't necessarily mean that you will know how the characters will look from that angle, and that's because the eyes often get squished when you're turning away. It's more compact and it's completely different from the other eye which is facing closest to the viewer. And I know that this is where a lot of beginners get tripped up because it basically throws out everything they learned about symmetry and keeping the right side and the left side the same out the window. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it but to just keep practicing and keep experimenting with different angles until you feel comfortable doing them. Of course, it's also super helpful to look at references, look up how you can draw eyes from a different angle, and just keep experimenting experimenting until you find a way that works for you. Because the thing with art is that there is no one right way to do it. There is a foundation of how you should be doing things, but art is really all about experimentation. So if you have a way of doing things that nobody else does, then don't feel discouraged because that just makes your art more unique to you. A handy trick I like to use to make sure that the face is proportionate is to make sure that the ear begins where the eyes also begin and ends where the base of the nose is and making sure to leave some space between the eyes and the ear for the temple and to use basic shapes such as circles, triangles, cones when you're sketching instead of drawing an outline of what the body will look like to give you a stronger foundation for the drawing. I also decided to shift the hair a little bit so you can see a little bit of her torso and what she's wearing because the way Lily drew her piece made it seem like she was kind of naked which uh, I'm trying to keep my channel advertiser friendly so 
clothes it is. And I know that the drawing was only inspired by Mulan, but I couldn't help think about that outfit she wore towards the end of the movie where she had red accents and blue overall. So that's what I decided to do with my drawing. You can sort of see me struggling quite a bit with the lines here in regards to how they look, the thickness and the thinness of it. I'm still learning that as well. I mentioned it before with the initial piece, but it's especially evident now. And right now, I'm just really not feeling these lines, so I have to skip a little bit because I tried something different and I just don't want to waste too much of my video runtime. Now, as you can see here, I've laid down all the base colors and I'm just starting to shade everything. Now, an important theory to know about shading is knowing all about undertones. Your skin isn't actually just made up of how light you are or how dark you are, but how light casts on your skin also plays a big role to what colors and shades would look good on you. What I'm talking about, of course, is our warm, neutral, and cold undertones. Warm undertones aren't exclusively for people with darker complexions, nor is cool skin tones exclusive to people with lighter complexions. A good life hack I discovered for picking skin color is actually just using foundation shades off of makeup sites. And for this drawing in particular, I've decided to go with a more neutral undertone, so not quite cold but not quite warm either. And that's why the colors I'm selecting specifically for the actual skin tone is more of a yellowish sort of tint, but the blush that I'm using is more of an orangey color, which is sort of in between that red and yellow region, which constitutes both warm and cool undertones. And you'll see further on how this completely changes the skin's coloration without really changing the base color. For girls, I tend to use punchier, saturated colors when I'm shading their skin. And for guys, I tend to go for more natural, muted tones to make them look more masculine and rugged, whereas the women look a lot softer and kind of more delicate. Something I learned the hard way is that if you over sculpt your drawing's face, especially if you're not going for a realistic look, it can actually make the character look really really strange either really old or looks like they've been starved all their lives and it's just uh, it's not a look guys so my philosophy from now on is that less is more if you do too much even your drawing's gonna cringe at you i also find that with my particular style of coloring adding light is a lot better than adding shadows that way your character doesn't look too muddled and it brings more attention to certain areas or details where you put the light. Adding light also saturates the color underneath a lot more, making it look more colorful and poppy. And it's just overall a look I personally enjoy. You can also experiment with the softness and the hardness of the light. So deciding whether it's more cell shaded or soft shaded. I personally like to use harder edges when I'm using lighting to sort of indicate detail. So in particular for her nose, you can sort of tell that the other side is where the light falls on the nose and just under the eyes to bring more detail to her eyes and softer shading on her forehead, her collarbone, basically where the light would cast and diffuse to make it look softer but also imply that that area is more pronounced than the rest, which gives the character a lot more depth. Of course, there is a delicate balance to it. Realistic artists often only use the soft shading because obviously you don't have that bright, punchy light in a real person, while hard shading makes a character look more stylized, so it's often utilized in things like anime and cartoons where you aren't necessarily aiming for that realism. I personally like it when artists can use a bit of both, so in addition to making their characters look more realistic and have more depth, they also look really stylized because they aren't afraid to play with the light in a more experimental way, shall we say. 
with this drawing specifically, you can see that I used a bit of both soft and hard shading when it came to her face with both the shadows and the light. For her clothes, I'm only using soft lighting and for her hair, I'm only using hard lighting. So I like to mix and match a little bit, um, keep my viewers on their toes. But overall, it does just make the entire piece look more dynamic and compelling because you have these different variations in the piece itself. The bottom line being, there really is no limit or restriction to what you want to do. You can go as crazy as you want or as conservative as you want, as long as you don't hesitate to do it. Art is an expressive medium, but... I guess the difficult part about it is knowing the foundations, knowing the tools that will help you express properly, and eventually you'll find a certain style or method of expression in your piece that you really enjoy that will subconsciously become a consistent theme in your art. And that's how you find your art style. So don't stress too much about it and just go with the flow. And after a few embellishments and finishing touches, this is what the final work looks like. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below and what other things Lily could have done to elevate her piece even more. And finally, we get to the last and latest piece from Lily Jean as of 2020, which is her elf drawing. And as you can see here, I've already done the overlay sketch and you can see that one ear is basically longer than the other and it's also at a completely different angle. But this time she makes a better use of just moving the character in a certain direction to give it more of that dynamic motion. And you can see that she's starting to experiment a little bit more with her shading. So moving into my recreation, there isn't really much that needed fixing aside from the ear. The face is pretty symmetrical because she's once again facing forward and Lily has gotten really good at making sure that the face is symmetrical like that. I just felt that the only things lacking about her drawing was that she was using a texture brush for the cotton bits of the dress which makes it look like she's wearing a cloud. And it's a tactic that I use as well, which you guys might notice in my previous speed draws. And there is definitely an art to utilizing them in a way that it doesn't seem too obvious. But the way Lily's done it, because she also has a very bright white background, it just blends too much. Um, and because of that, I've decided to custom draw the cotton bits myself for my drawing. I've also changed the direction she's facing towards just to give it a bit more variety and also giving her a stronger line of motion by fully committing her towards that sideways sort of movement that you could sort of see in Lily's original piece which I've done by not only leaning her body into it but also using her hair and the hat to reinforce the movement. Compared to the other two drawings, this was the one that I made the least modifications to. I was basically just following her lead and making small corrections here and there, as well as taking a few artistic liberties on my side. It really just goes to show that the more you practice and do something, the more you'll improve regardless because it's art is just all about trial and error and it's basically about recognizing where you went wrong and trying to improve upon it. However, it's also really important that you don't just focus on what you like to do or what you feel like you're already good at. So in Lily's case, she tends to do more faces and hair and she really severely neglects things like legs, toes, and hands. And this is very apparent in her Wonder Woman drawing, which was released, I think, just a few days ago this year, where she didn't even draw her hands, once again, letting it sort of fade into the darkness as part of the effects of the drawing, which is a clever way of doing it, but it's not going to improve her skills as an artist moving forward. And even if you don't like drawing something, odds are you will still have to end up drawing it when you want to make a specific piece or do a specific pose. 
especially when you're doing commission work because at that point you'd need to be able to cater to your commissioner's requests. I guess the most important thing to think about when you're trying to pose your character is that no one ever really poses with a full frontal view unless they're taking a driver's license photo or a passport photo which never looks flattering on anyone and that's why a lot of Instagram models or models in general often go at an angle or even if they're a runway model they're not just standing completely straight and still there's always a bit of ebb and flow to the way they're standing and it's really just all about getting those subtle details right and it really defines the difference between a beginner and a more seasoned artist. Essentially, the major changes I made to my piece compared to Lily's piece is that I gave the care. with the lighting a little bit and added a bit of mist coming out of her mouth to suggest just how cold it is. I made the falling snow a bit more apparent but aside from that I really didn't change that much with this one. Let me know if you guys liked my versions of these drawings and let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I hope the art tips can help you guys in some way, shape, or form. I want to thank you guys so much for helping me come so far so quickly. I've just managed to monetize my channel, which is super exciting because I never thought I'd ever be able to make money out of YouTube. It's always been a dream of mine, sure, but I didn't actually think it would happen. If you guys want to see more from me, please follow me on all my social media. If you guys check out my comic, Amber Hills, I would be very happy. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and I hope I see you guys again in the next one. Goodbye!